Hallo, I will teach you how to draw a wall like this using geometry notes. It's simple and only needs 40 notes. Feel free to subscribe and let me know if you want a follow-up video with more detail. I start with a Bezier curve and make it bigger. Try to keep it flat on the z-axis. As a brick, I'll use a cube that I gave bricky proportions. The instance on points node will put my brick on the curve. Next step is to resample the curve for more bricks. Let's quickly fix the rotation. Align Euler to vector with a curve tangent input. My long side of the brick is the y-axis, so I set it to y. If your curve isn't flat here, it can lead to bad stuff. Keep in mind that even real life walls don't tend to slant upwards, but seemingly sink into the ground. In my resample curve node, I set the mode to length and give it the same distance that my brick is long. That should close the gaps and spawn new bricks dependent on the length of the curve. For multiple rows, I will take that input with the curve and instance it on a mesh line. The Z offset of our mesh line should be the height of our brick cube. Now we want the typical offset every other row has. I found an elegant solution using our old friend Modulo. I go to my resample curve and half the distance. Now we got twice as many bricks as we would need. Next up, I get a spline parameter node that returns the index of every point on my curve. I plug in a Modulo math node with a modulus of 2, converting the IDs into an alternating set of zeros and ones. Now I will use a compare node in integer mode and find all the bricks that are equal to zero. Once I connect that output to the selection of my cube instancer, as you can see, half of my bricks disappear again. If I set the equal comparison to 1, we flip the selection and all bricks seemingly shift half a size to the side. Now we only have to figure out how to turn every other row into a 1 here. I think the easiest way is to just double the Z offset of our mesh line. That leaves enough space to fit in another set of rows. I will duplicate the instance on points node that receives the curve, maintaining the old inputs. However, the second one I will shift up the height of one brick using a transform node. Once joined back together it looks like before, but now we have a node line here that we can manipulate that contains every other row. Remember we wanted every other row to return a value of 1. Get a capture attribute node, set it to integer, type in 1, connect it to either of the paths. The attribute output goes into the comparison node. Here I have a plane as a floor underneath. In order to draw on it, I tap into edit mode. On the left we have two pencil tools. That one is for vectors. It only appears if your base object was a curve and not a mesh. Up there, set the draw mode to surface and go crazy. From here on, it's an easy to modify setup. Add some random rotations with the rotate Euler node. Add a random boolean to the brick selection with boolean math. When we have problems with anything that relates to randomness, sometimes it helps to add a realize instances node, by the way. Use cooler bricks instead of a cube. Model a mortar object around the sides of your brick and instance it on the same points. This should cover the basics, I think.